What's up guys, I'm Ira Shell and this is Too Deep. After a couple of our videos on Satan and Lucifer really started gaining some attention, I realized that, you know, a great topic to consider was, is Satan stronger than Lucifer? So let's just dive right into that question. Now, if you've seen any of our other videos, especially anything to do with Satan or Lucifer, you know that my whole life until a few years ago, I believed that they were one and the same being. I believe that the I believe the long told church tradition that Satan started out as Lucifer, the most beautiful choir leader angel you could have ever seen. Then he sinned and was thrown down from heaven to earth and then became Satan. You know, that was the belief that that I had because of the long told church tradition. And I believe that because, you know, the scriptures that they gave was Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28. But after reading it for myself and comparing it with Revelation chapter 12, I realized that those two scriptures had absolutely nothing to do with Satan. Instead, those two scriptures, Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28, were about two different entities. An anointed guardian cherub who was turned to ash because of his sin and Lucifer who is a being that we aren't even exactly 100% sure what he is, is thrown down to the far reaches of Sheol, to the bottomless pit. And for more in-depth look at like the difference between these three entities, check out our video From Lucifer to Satan, which is under our Too Deep category. So if Lucifer and Satan are two different beings, then who's stronger, right? That's That's... That's a question that many people have. And, you know, it's it's it was a question that I had as well. And, you know, it's easy to say that Satan is stronger simply because he's the ruler of this world or because he's the father of all lies or because he's the ruler of the kingdom of darkness or because, you know, he's our adversary. But just because something is easy to say doesn't mean it's right. So let's take a look at scripture to see if we can find a definite answer to our question and you know let's start with the basic foundation of these two beings now as i said earlier we weren't we we aren't a hundred percent sure what lucifer is because the bible never blatantly comes out and says lucifer is this or lucifer is that but the bible does blatantly come out and tell us what satan is so let's go to genesis chapter 3 verse 1 now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. According to Genesis chapter 3 verse 1, Satan is one of the beasts of the field. When describing Satan, the author doesn't write the serpent was more crafty than all of the other creatures the Lord God had made or the serpent was more crafty than the man and woman the Lord God had made or even that the serpent was more crafty than the beast of the field that the Lord God had made. Instead, the author specifically says more crafty than any other beast of the field the Lord God had made. By saying any other, God puts the serpent, Satan, as one of the beasts of the field. And if that's not even enough for you, like you're, you still think like, oh no, you're reading too much into that, Ari. Well, here, let, let, let's talk about it one more. Let's, let's talk about it again. Let, let, let's go into it a little deeper. God makes a comparison of intelligence between Satan and the beast of the field. Now, if Satan is an angel, as church tradition teaches, then this should not only be a harsh insult like it is in Jude chapter 10 and 2 Peter chapter 2 and tw verse 12, but it should be showing exactly how dumb Satan is because angels are above mankind according to Hebrews chapter 2 verse 6 through 8 and mankind is above the animals. But this doesn't seem to be the case at all. Instead, the author says the serpent, Satan, is more crafty than any other beast of the field to show off how wise he is. And how can we be sure? Well, first of all, this is the introduction to Satan's successful temptation of Eve in the Garden of Eden. God is showing that it took the understanding of wisdom in order to successfully tempt Eve. Now, now check this out. I thought this was quite interesting. The word there that's translated as crafty is the Hebrew word aram, which can be translated as 
prudent, shrewd, crafty, discerning, sensible. But more times than not, it is translated as prudent. It means pertaining to wisdom and shrewdness in the management of affairs, showing a capacity for understanding. It's used 11 times in the entire Bible, and 8 out of the 11 times it is translated as prudent in the book of Proverbs in order to explain the importance of wisdom. Such as Proverbs chapter 12, verse 23. A prudent man conceals knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaims folly. The other three times it is translated as crafty is once as Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 that we just read, and twice in the book of Job, both by Eliphaz and Job chapter 5 and Job chapter 15, condemning the works of the prudent, translated as crafty. And we know that his words... Eliphaz's words were not accurate because he is the one that the Lord calls out specifically. He calls him out specifically out of the out of Job's three friends for mischaracterizing God. Look with me at Job chapter 42 verse 7. After the Lord had spoken these words to Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanite, "My anger burns against you and your two friends, for you have not spoken of me what is right as my servant Job has. I say all of this to point out that God wouldn't have inspired the author of Genesis to write that Satan was more prudent than any other beast of the field to show his understanding of wisdom unless he was one of them. Because if the beasts of the field are just animals, then it would be showing that Satan is stupid, not that he is wise or that he has an understanding of wisdom which is why he is able to bend the truth in his temptation of Eve because he tells her, no, you're not going to die per se. No, you're not really going to die. You are going to understand. You're going to be like God, knowing both good and evil. So that's how we know that it's not an insult. It is a compliment. And the only way for that to be a compliment is if he is one of them. And is and if he is one of them, then they aren't animals, but a species of spiritual terrestrial beings that God created on earth. For more on the beasts of the field, check out our video, The Beasts of the Field, which is under our Too Deep category. So as we said in our video, The Beasts of the Field, Satan is a dragon. And we found that out according to both Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 and Revelation chapter 12 verse 9 which is a type of serpentine creature, which is a type of beast of the field. Now, what Lucifer is exactly, as I said earlier, isn't, a, isn't as blatant and outright as what Satan is. Now, in our video from Lucifer to Satan, I explained that Lucifer was a star of some kind, which, you know, I don't necessarily disagree with. But like I said earlier, the Bible doesn't give us a blatant answer on what he is. So where does this idea that Lucifer could be a star of some kind come from? Well, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12, it says, How you were fallen from heaven, O day star, son of dawn, how you were cut down to the ground, you who laid the nations low. According to this, Lucifer translated here as day star fell from heaven. You know, if we just read this verse alone by itself without going any farther, we'll read this as the third heaven where God abounds. But that isn't actually the case. If we keep reading, it says that Lucifer said in his heart that he would do this, this, and this. In other words, he only desired it. He only thought about it. He only wanted it. He never actually did it. He never actually even attempted to do it. He said it in his heart. Look at look at what it says, verses 13 through 15. You said in your heart... I will ascend to heaven above the stars of God. I will set my throne on high. I will sit on the mount of assembly in the far reaches of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make my myself like the most high. But you are brought down to Sheol, to the far reaches of the pit. Lucifer is stopped before he could even attempt his heart's desires. And now with that said, God didn't have a problem with him being in the second heaven what we call space where the stars are where the sun is where the moon is god's problem is that he desires to go above that so that he can set his throne on high 
Now, to me, it sounds like Lucifer's domain is the second heaven. So when God says you have fallen from heaven, he isn't talking about the third heaven where he is, where God is, but the second heaven where the stars are. And if Lucifer's domain is with the stars in the second heaven, then we can assume that he is some type of star-like being, as we stated in our other videos. Now, with that said, we have our two different beings and their species. We have Satan, who is a dragon, a type of beast of the field, and then we have Lucifer, who is a star-like being, a, a type of celestial entity. So where do we go from here? What's next? Well, just like every human being has a God-given purpose, every spiritual being has a God-given purpose as well. A job description, if you will. And luckily, the Bible tells us what both of their job descriptions are. First, Satan. Jude 8 through 9. It says, Yet in like manner these people also relying on their, their dreams defile the flesh reject authority and blaspheme the glorious ones. But when the archangel Michael contending with the devil was disputing about the body of Moses, he did not presume to pronounce a blasphemous judgment, but said, the Lord rebuke you. According to Jude, Satan is a glorious one. And what that job entitles, I'm not 100% sure. But I do know that it gave Satan authority higher than the archangel Michael, as well as the ability to just enter into the presence of God whenever he wanted and talk to God face to face without much respect at all, as we see in Job chapter 1 and 2. Now, Lucifer's job description is a little bit harder to find. It's you, have, you gotta dig to find it, you know, it's not just blatantly there. You gotta find, you gotta dig to find it. So let's just read that verse. Revelation chapter 9, verse 11. It says, They have as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek he is called Apollyon. Now I know what you're thinking. That verse doesn't say Lucifer. It says Abaddon and Apollyon. And yes, I am aware of that. But as we explained in our video, Abaddon, the angel of the bottomless pit, which is under our the end times category, Abaddon comes out of the bottomless pit. The only person to be thrown into the bottomless pit prior to him rising is Lucifer. For more on that, check out that video. And, you know, we go into more detail on why Lucifer and Abaddon are the same. So Lucifer's job description is being an angel. Because as we said in our video, what are angels, which is under our... 2d category angels aren't a class of beings but a job description the term angel just means messenger it's not a special celestial being as it is used to describe jesus humans and various spiritual beings and for more on that check out what are angels which again is under our too deep category now with that said we now have the type of species and job description of both Satan and Lucifer. Okay, how does that help us at all, Ari? I, I, I'm not following what you're laying down. I'm not, I'm not getting it. Well, let me, let me bring it all back around now for you. If we take a look at Peter's account of Satan and Michael, we'll get, we'll get our answer to our question is Satan stronger than Lucifer? Second Peter chapter 2, verse 10 through 11. It says, And especially those who indulge in the lust of defiling passion and despise authority, bold and willful, they do not tremble as they blaspheme the glorious ones. Whereas angels, though greater in might and power, do not pronounce a blasphemous judgment against them before the Lord. According to Peter, arguably Jesus' best friend, Let's not argue about it, though, because he totally was Jesus' best friend. Angels are greater in might and power, but because of the authority of the glorious ones, they don't pronounce a blasphemous judgment against them before the Lord. Now, as I said earlier, Satan is a glorious one and Lucifer is an angel. Therefore, we can understand that Lucifer is stronger than Satan. This would make sense because angels, would, they would have to be more powerful or stronger than than the glorious ones or just they would just have to be stronger than most spiritual beings in general because this job descript this job description 
is that they're messengers. They go back and forth between the realms, if you will. And they don't go based on authority. They fight their way through. Just, just take a look at Daniel chapter 10, verse 12 through 14. Then he said to me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humbled yourself before your God, your words have been heard, and I have come because of your words. The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, but Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I was left there with the kings of Persia and and came to make you understand what is to happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision is for the days yet to come. Gabriel, an angel, had to fight through the spirits of Persia in order to get Daniel to in order to get to Daniel in order to give him an answer to his prayers. In fact, there were so many and they were so strong that he needed the help of Michael, an archangel, who in this he calls him one of the chief princes. He needed Michael's help because of his great strength and power and probably also because of his authority. And for more on that, you, you can check out our video, Territorial Spirits, What Are They?, which is under our Too Deep category. So now we have our answer. We know now that Lucifer is more stronger and powerful than Satan because angels are stronger and mightier than the glorious ones but if that isn't enough for you here's some more evidence let's take a look at their different sins and their different punishments let's first look at satan his sin was that he tried to kill god the son he turned a third of the angels against god and then started a war in heaven where he tried to continue his assassination plan revelation chapter 12 verse 4 through 7 his tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth so that when she bore her child he might devour it she gave birth to a male child one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron but her child was caught up to god and to his throne and the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God, in which she is to be nourished for 1260 days. Now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. For more on this, check out our video, Revelation chapter 12, War, Why Does Satan Attack?, which is under our Too Deep category. So Satan's sin was that he tried to murder God. Lucifer's sin, on the other hand, was that he desired to be like God. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 13 through 14. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven above the stars of God. I will set my throne on high. I will sit on the mount of assembly in the far reaches of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. Lucifer desired to share in the glory of God and as we know, according to Isaiah chapter 42, verse 8, God doesn't share his glory with anyone. But nevertheless, to me, you know, their punishments seem to be a little off. But, you know, to me, because think about it. Satan actually tried to kill God. Like, he tried to murder him. Whereas Lucifer desired to be like him. Satan's punishment for trying to murder God, taking down a third of the angels and starting a war in heaven, was just to be thrown down to earth and no longer be able to enter heaven again. Check this out, Revelation chapter 12, verse 8 through 9. But he was defeated and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who was called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him. Satan was only thrown down to the earth and never allowed to enter into heaven again because of his sin. Whereas Lucifer's punishment for desiring to be like God was that he was locked in the bottomless pit. Isaiah chapter 14 verse 15. But you are brought down to Sheol to the far reaches of the pit. Lucifer was thrown to the pit as punishment. He wasn't just chilling there because it was his home. It wasn't a crappy job where he needed to keep things in check. 
Angels are messenger spirits. They communicate with mankind between the realms, if you will. Lucifer was thrown to the bottomless pit as a punishment. It was his cell. It kept him locked up from the fall of Babylon until the star falls from heaven and unlocks, unlocks a bottomless pit to release him in the end times. This is quite the punishment for desiring to be like God. So to me, Satan's sin of trying to completely destroy God by taking him out one person at a time, starting with God the Son as a human baby, was a worse offense than desiring to be like God unless Lucifer's desires stood more of a threat than Satan's desires. And if his desires alone was more of a threat than Satan's actions, then that would make Lucifer more powerful. But, you know, let's keep going. Let's see what else we got. Let's look at Daniel real quick, because Daniel seems to be under the same belief as we are at Hold to Hope. When, when he saw the visions of the four beasts recording in, recorded in Daniel chapter 7, Daniel saw an extreme difference in strength and overall just fierceness and terrifyingness between the first three beasts and the last beast. So let's look at the first beast. beast. Daniel chapter 7, verse 4. It says, the first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. Then as I looked, its wings were plucked off and it was lifted up from the ground and made to stand on two feet like a man and the, man, and the mind of a man was given to it. As we explained in our video, The Four Beasts of Daniel, which is a mini series under our The End Times category, the first beast Daniel saw was Satan. Daniel doesn't mention it being scary, intimidating, or strong, or doing any type of violent actions that would require strength. The only thing that he saw was that its wings were plucked, and that it was given the heart of man, which is translated as the mind of man. Now, let's take a look at his description of the fourth beast which we explained is Lucifer in that mini-series. Down in chapter 7, verse 7, After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, terrifying and dreadful and exceedingly strong. It had great iron teeth. It devoured and broke in pieces and stomped what was left with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had Ten horns. Daniel sees Lucifer as exceedingly strong, dreadful, and terrifying, unlike any other beast he saw before. Even their prophesied ends are different, where it, it seems like, okay, Satan, you can do whatever you want. I'ma just keep you in check. Lucifer, no, you, you gotta go. You gotta go. L Look, look at what else Daniel sees. Daniel chapter 7, verse 11 through 12. I looked then because of the sound of the great words that the horn was speaking, and as I looked, the beast was killed, and his body destroyed and given over to be burned with fire. As for the rest of the beasts, their dominion was taken away, but their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. So according to Daniel, Lucifer was, was taken out first, and he had to be taken out first. Why would he need to be thrown into hell first if he wasn't the most threatening? Even the false prophet and the beast of Revelation are both gotten rid of before Satan, according to Revelation chapter 19, verse 20. Satan is then thrown into the bottomless pit for a thousand years and then released in order to tempt the nations again. And then he is finally thrown into hell, the lake of fire, according to Revelation chapter 20 verse 1 through 10. So just to sum everything up for you guys, Lucifer is stronger than Satan because angels are stronger than the glorious ones. And also because Lucifer's punishment was so much more severe than Satan's punishment because his threat was much more, was much greater than Satan's threat. Daniel also describes Lucifer as the stronger, more terrifying being in his vision of the four beasts recorded in Daniel chapter 7. And Satan is also allowed to be 
prolonged on earth whereas lucifer is thrown into the lake of fire first i hope you guys enjoyed this video and that it answered any questions that you may have had about satan and lucifer's strength and if you feel that maybe we left something out or maybe you had a question that we didn't answer in this video let us know in the comment section below and we'll try to answer it for you but if you enjoyed this video please feel free to like comment share and subscribe to our channel and until next time god bless